All right, so I want to get this started off right. Um, so we're going to start with an exercise demo this morning. So something to wake everybody up and get you excited for the event. Um, so I'm going to bring to the stage Dr. Janet O'Shea, who is our resident um, ninja here at <laughs> UCLA, along with Paul McCarthy. And um, she is a professor of world arts and cultures. She has a rich background um, that stems from being a dancer, art history historian, and martial artist. Her research at UCLA focuses on the close analysis of movement as it opens to social, political, and scientific presentation. She is the principal investigator of a transdisciplinary seed grant on martial arts and cognition. Um, which is also um, being collaborated with Dr. Bob Builder and Paul McCarthy. And so I'll turn it over to Dr. O'Shea. Okay. Right. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Sarah. Our, my collaborators and I are currently working on a study that tests the cognitive benefits of martial arts. Um, our hypothesis is that martial arts both develops and demands um, certain high level of cognitive skills like abstract thinking, creativity, and impulse control. Um, we are, in effect, interested in looking at whether learning and drilling certain kinds of complex movement um, sequences enhances cognition. Um, this is an ongoing study. We're actually um, completing the training process of the study right now. So we don't have data for you. But we have something else that is potentially more fun and um, certainly more visually engaging. We have the drills themselves. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul McCarthy, uh, director of the UCLA Martial Arts Program. Uh, I put together the. Um, the drills, the kind of curriculum for this intervention of the study. Uh, and I'd like to present them to you. But I, I want to kind of give you an idea of where we're coming from first. So if you'd like to participate, uh, that would be great. If you want to stand up and try these things, or you can stay seated, that's fine as well. Uh, first off, I want everyone to take their left hand. And I want you to click the shape of a box. So four corners of a box. Considering the room I'm in, I'm pretty sure some of you might have seen this one before. OK, take the right hand. Shape of a triangle. Now try and do them together. Don't look at me, because I can't do it either. <laughs> I was practicing this for about 35 minutes last night. I still can't do it. The second one. Take both hands. Think, imagine you're a rowboat. We're going to row. Row your hands forward. Good. OK, row them backwards. You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> One forward, one backwards. <laughs> now, sometimes you do that and you think, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And you're just doing a different cycle of backwards. <laughs> Very true. So these, these kinds of drills are what we're trying to replicate from, from, um, from a martial art called Filipino martial arts, or Kali Eskrima, uh, from the Philippines. And, uh, and we're going to kind of go through some demonstrations, and, and hopefully you can see that the, the parallels that we have for these types of movements. So first off, I'm going to invite Guru Anna Sifu Elaine out to show some empty hand drills they've been doing. So working with partners right in the front there, thank you. Um, this is just a single straight count. Relatively easy, uh, can be done very slow like that. You can see you've got reaction time, hand-eye coordination. Uh, next one we call the caveman, uh, single for single, just blocking inside and out. Now, obviously, you can see the combative applications for these, but we also think there's also the cognitive applications. They can pass that through by waving in and out, moving, swaying back and forth. They can also block and then pass it through with the wave. And then they can go back to the straight count, which will include a three-tap motion. So complicated movements. We can make it a little bit more complicated and, and drive a little bit more. Uh, by, they have to do it in order. So we do a little coding sequence. So they're going to do four counts of each one. Three, four. Five. 
Good. Thank you. So you can do that order. And then once you've got that sequence, one, two, three, four, five, you can start messing around with it and going, okay, five, four, three, two, one, two, one, three, four, five, whatever you like. Uh, we're going to add another element as well. We have uh, a footwork drill called hourglass. So they're going to start off with their single count straight and just work the hourglass footwork. So if you can see, it's a simple pattern. Think of a figure eight or an infinity sign. We like to call it hourglass. So their feet have to do this pattern, and they have to focus on their hands doing the pattern as well. They can change up to the caveman without stopping. And the pass. And the wave. And then the three count motion. <laughs> <laughs> they can go one for one. One for one. There we go, there we go. Nice, good, good. Good, time, good. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause for that. These guys are some of the best martial arts instructors, uh, not only in Los Angeles, but in the country. And they find these drills difficult when we change up the pattern. If we had practiced this specific sequence, it's easy to learn it and get it down with the muscle memory. But it's the important thing that we want to point out is it's how quickly can you adapt to a different sequence. We're going to bring out the sticks. This gets a little bit more exciting. Um, similar kind of idea. We've got a set of particular techniques right here. First off, we have cob cob or pie pie. Nice, easy, simple. Straight into e-kiss, which would be an X. Notice the bilateral movement that we've got going on here. High, low, high, up and down. And then moving into some more complex ones. Heaven six. Standard six. And there. So now they're going to go through the sequence. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So once you've learned those basic movements and you understand the sequence, pretty easy to do. So let's change the sequence up, see how they do. Um, I want you to go one, four, two, four, three, four. <laughs> keep going, keep going, work through it. Good, okay, let's just change it up again. Let's do one, one, five, two, five, three, five. Good. Definitely round of applause. <laughs> what I really wanted to show there was, was when, they, when they failed. Now, I didn't, I didn't want to make them fail, but that's a really important part, and that's how we've been teaching a lot. We want to keep going until they get to, the students get to a point where they can't do it. But what we want to do is to figure it out, okay? Not just stop and restart, but go, okay, well, let's just go to here, and we'll pick it up in a bit. Being able to make that adaptation the thought process while the movements are happening is, is a really important part of teaching martial arts and teaching any activity, any kind of sports performance. So what, what we progressed to, which we didn't get too much to with, um, with the intervention, but where you can see this goes to, so if we go with the, the sombrata. So empty hand first, guys, Hubert. So those drills we did, the empty hand drills before, now they're just playing them. You can see a little bit of structure there, but you can see there's also a few different things going on. They can move around, they can circle up. This is completely unchoreographed, there's no pattern here. They're just responding to each attack, but staying within the constructs of the movements. Obviously, the benefits of reaction time, hand-eye coordination, not getting hit <laughs> is really good. Thank you, guys. We can play with that kind of format. Yes, good job. Awesome. We play that type of format also with the single stick. This is sombrado in the shade, counter for counter. Sifu Elaine strikes, Guru Anna blocks. Guru Anna strikes, Sifu Elaine blocks. And you can see with the fast pace of this is that the problem solving has to happen. If the problem solving doesn't happen, then either your hand or your head hurts a lot because you got hit. <laughs> so the feedback is instant. <laughs> and trust me, all of us have had lots of instant feedback. Um, but it also helps out with the cognition and the thought process. And obviously, we can do this with the double stick as well. So you've got multiple strikes coming. You can block, strike with either one. The feet are moving. They're moving high and low. One person can go to one knee, stay standing. The other person can go down. The other person comes up, rotating around. 
time. Good. Before, before we hit someone in the front row. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause. So that's a very small taste of, of the curriculum that we've put together. Obviously, we started off very, uh, much slower with the, with the students because they were naive to martial arts. They weren't martial artists. We had to teach these movements first. But we saw a, a progression in their learning that was unparalleled that we've ever seen. In my 20 years of martial arts experience or, or teaching, they were able to really pick it up very fast and get to that level where they're really moving fast and, uh, and doing very well in the, in the last drill we do in every lesson, which was we put goggles on, give them soft sticks, and they get to spar. So their aim is actually to hit as opposed to get the drill correct. And we think the application of that is very important. Being able to take structured drills and put it in a play experience, an experience where you can just make up what you want, you don't have to do the specific techniques, is a very important piece, not only for, uh, for cognition and thought processes, but, but for us as martial artists. On the battlefield, you don't go running out there with your sword and go, okay, you ready? One, two, three, four. It doesn't happen. You have to adapt. You have to do different things. You have to make it your own. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention um, uh, as we do this, you notice a lot of us are wearing um, the, the, the pattern. Uh, I'm going to look at Jay right there, the pattern on the front. We train at the Inner Santo Academy. Our instructor turned 78 in July. Uh, I can absolutely guarantee you that he moves faster than these guys, faster than me. He can move up and down faster. The sharpness of his mind is unbelievable. He, knows, uh, he teaches kids uh, uh, twice a week, or two, three times a week. Uh, there's about 30 to 40 kids in the class. He knows every single name right off the bat. And it's just a testament he's done this all his life. He is the pioneer of this martial art. He's world famous at it. And he's done it every single day of his life. And we think that's a really big, has a really big impact on the ability of him to stay sharp uh, at that uh, uh, advanced stage, I should say. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be here for the rest of the symposium. If you have any questions, thank you very much. Thank you for these guys.